What's good, everyone? This is Marcus the Fingers, D A F I N G A Z, back with the samplist and back with another review of a Native Instruments plugin. Before we get into that, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to this channel, The Samplist, on YouTube for more great videos like the one you are about to watch. And although this plugin, Session Percussionist, was provided by the great team over at Native Instruments, they have not had a chance to review this video, and that will not affect our decision on the plugin itself. Today, we are going to talk all about Session Percussionist from Native Instruments. It is a new approach to percussion where we get 58 percussion instruments we have access to hundreds of loops and rolls access to tens of thousands of single hits access to 21 articulations 15 velocity layers over 2,000 drum patterns with dozens of round robins that can be adjusted up to six different speeds have been recorded and we can adjust it to our session tempo we also have an advanced playback engine that gives us controls over swing, humanized tempo, velocity, accents, flams, and rolls, and we can also swap the instruments in and out. This is, this is basically our own version of a studio percussion with that studio percussion musician sound. It clocks in at just under six gigabytes, and it is currently priced at the time of this recording at $99. It does require the full version of Contact or the free version, Contact Player, version 7.7 .7 or higher all right so let's get into the plugin uh just out the gate i'm gonna play what we have right here so that's out the box so when you are looking at the layers here let's start with the different colors you see the different colors down here at the bottom the first five keys are the loops that can be triggered. So the first five keys uh, of an octave, so we have C0, C1, C2, C3, C4, C5. Um, the first five keys there are triggering the loops. Um, so we'll start with the, the red um, options here. The next five keys will contain the main one-shot articulations. Uh, so this, in this case, I'm looking at the cajon. Uh, and then those last two keys in that octave will provide the rolls that are shapeable with the mod wheel. And also I can have the impact with this wheel, the pitch bend. So you have a lot of controls there within your keyboard. Uh, if I wanted to mess around with the cajon, and it tells you also here what octaves will trigger sort of that sound. The C2 would be the cajon. Uh, the C3 here in this case would be tambourine. Cabasa. Um, C4 and C5 will be the cabasas there. So you have all of those different ranges. You see the little graphic here that will tell you these are the cajon graphics, the tambourine, and the cabasa graphics. So that is what those colors mean. If you have a native instrument keyboard, uh, you can see the lights on your keyboard to uh, let you know what range you are dealing with uh, when you're playing those keys on your keyboard. Let's jump back to the top. We have the random future. You know that I am a huge fan of the randomized button. So we can random, uh, randomize a different preset set so i'm gonna just choose one here so now you see we have the a go go bells we have the cajon a shaker some bar chimes and some bongos i'm just gonna play on um, this bottom octave here will trigger all the loops at once so um same similar the first five will still be the uh, loops the second the next five will still be the uh one shots and then the final two will be um those loops also uh but it'll play all of them so if i play c0 And just right away, that's giving me, you know, some uh, Afro beat slash reggaeton vibes. You can't, I don't have my camera on, but I'm dancing. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, just right away, you can just start dialing. Um, so yeah, you have the randomized function there. You do have your presets up here um, that are triggered, uh, that are categorized by different categories. You can go by genre. So if you want to go to Latin, you can also choose the amount of players all the way up from one to five players. You can have different playing techniques and then you can favorite your own presets. It will tell you the BPM and the number of players um, that played that preset. Uh, so you have so many options there, 117 presets, I believe, um, to choose from. And again, I can just 
click here, uh, which I tend to do often is just click randomly uh, to go through. Um, I haven't selected presets, uh, favorites, so I don't know why these favorites are selected, but hey, why not? Um, uh, so that's there. You see the genres and the categories there that you have. Um, all right, so we're still at the top here. You have the presets there. You have your uh, browser that you can navigate through there. And if we go to articulation filter, this is a way where you can have basically an EQ built into the plugin. So if I play this loop, I don't know what it sounds like. Let's see what it sounds like. There's already not a lot of low end, but if I wanted to filter out more low end, I can drag this here. And that's great for filtering out some things, either low end or high end, depending on the track you're making. If you don't want it to conflict with some of the bass elements or some of the kick drum elements, you can filter out the low end. Or if you don't want it to interfere with like maybe some vocal elements or some other high strings and things, you can filter out the high end here. So you can have that as the articulation filter. The play button will play the loop as is. So it's almost like I'm hitting the key at the bottom, but this will play the loop. So here we go. I probably won't use a play button much. I will just trigger based on me playing the key on my keyboard here. Uh, then we have a MIDI button here, um, I believe. Then we have this MIDI icon. That's what it looks like there. I don't know exactly what it does, so don't quote me on what that will or won't do. Maybe it'll trigger if you have your MIDI instrument um, to detect the input. But I'm not fully sure uh, what that button does. So <laughs> there's that. And then you have this question mark, which is probably the most helpful. That might tell me what the MIDI does. Uh, but the question mark will basically overlay uh, what is being shown on the screen. So you can tell you how to play percussionist, um, sessionist, session percussionist. Um, so right here, it'll tell you the pattern of single hitch rolls um, for the instrument octaves. Uh, and it'll outline some things there, um, how you can play those different things. If we go to, uh, we're on the main page, if we go to editor page and we hit that, um, it looks like this is the, the question mark doesn't tell you everything. Um, so it would be um, helpful if I can go to editor page, click the question mark, it would give me some more context on what I can do on the editor page uh, and the mixer page here. Um, but we'll get to those shortly. Um, in any case, it does help to have that uh, just high level overview there of how to play percussionist using the question mark. All right, so um, I think we pretty much hit everything on the main page, except we have humanized. So if I play this loop again, So add just some human uh, error. I don't know if you want to call that that. Then we have swings. We have 16th note swing or 8th note swing. So let's bring that in slowly. So you hopefully you can start hearing that. Let's listen to the 8th note. So it adds uh, some swing to the track. Pause. Um, so you had some swing there, and then we have shift. Uh, let's bring this down. It will shift the notes by ticks. So we're going to bring this all the way down from negative 80 up to positive 80. Um, it might be kind of hard to hear because it's shifting all the notes together, but in the context of a track, you will hear like you can adjust those uh, by ticks so that it can align better, um, or you can add a little bit of uh, like element of shifted shiftiness to your track. Uh, I believe that is everything here. It's actually a very powerful plugin and most of my time will probably be spent on the main page here, uh, but we'll jump over to the editor and let's go ahead and load up another random thing here. So here we are on the editor page. With the editor, we can sort of click in um, the notes we wanna play uh, very randomly there. Um, in this case, I'm doing bar chimes, uh, bright chimes. Let's find something a little bit more fun. There we go. So I can click randomly here, some notes that I wanna play. And then down here at the bottom, it will suggest, I don't know if it's using AI or what it's doing, but it will suggest similar grooves inspired by either what you click in or what you record in. So um, what I clicked in is let's say I click all this things, these things in, um, I can have slap, I can do the heel, um, basically how the drum is being hit. Um, I can say heel or toe, uh, side slap right, heel or toe, you have those options. Um, there, uh, we can do open slap, muted slap. And of course we can edit the grid. So let's say I like, I wanna play these other versions. So here's what we have up here. Let's say I wanna play this one.
hopefully hopefully you can hear those differences uh let's say i like one of these what i can do is click and drag this up to the top uh, so if you look at what's changing hopefully you can see what's changing i can drag this to the play lane here and you see the numbers changing uh it is basically doing its thing uh detecting what is happening we can also do record so if i want to record it uh let's say i want to go to these one shots here or let's say i want to record a pattern i'm going to hit record Not the best, but let's play it back. And then what happens at the bottom here is that it will use uh, its brain to uh, create similar patterns based on what I recorded. And so I can navigate and I can, of course, scroll down through all these different options here that it would detect that would be similar to what I recorded. So, so many layers there. That's just the articulation. You also have velocity controls where you can adjust the velocity of the different hits. Um, we can adjust them all together. You can also adjust certain elements. You can have some go up and down. It looks like in this case, we have every other beat going down where the sub beats are going up, something like that. We can do a ramp up. So it's sort of like a scale. We can do randomize where it just randomizes the velocity of each. Um, and then we can adjust the overall um, sort of dynamic of the velocity range there, the range of the velocity. And you can also drag this over if you only want to uh, worry about editing, say like in this case would be the first bar or the first half bar there. Um, you can use that to only pick and choose certain elements. Uh, with timing here, we can adjust the timing. We can move things, uh, shift them left or right. Uh, we can shift uh, some left and some right. Um, I believe what this does it is, is it would move the louder notes left and the softer notes right, or it might be backwards, but one of those type things. And then of course we can randomize and we can limit the range also of the timing. And then we have similar options with flams where we can click in uh, the different flams and fills and things. Uh, we can create rolls and then we can adjust the velocity and speed. Um, you can adjust whether it's quarter notes or two quarter notes, um, almost like back to back. Uh, this might not be quarter notes. It looks like a quarter note symbol, but it might be more um, faster depending on where we put it. Um, so you can really get in here, customize your own fills, flams, uh, customize the articulation of each drum. So if I wanted to select the cajones here, the colors will tell you what instrument you are working with also. So it does help um, to have that color coordination. So if I want to adjust some of the cajon velocity, timing and things, that, that would be red. In this case, the uh, congos would be green. Congas would be green. The cowbell would be blue. The shaker would be yellow. And we don't have an instrument loaded up on, on C5. Um, so that is, I believe, most of what we see here. You do have levels of undo. So if I were to drag this, let's say up there, I can undo that and go back. I don't know how many levels of undo you have, but it'll tell you what you undid <laughs> there. Um, so you can say, oh, I did that, or I will undo that. And of course you can save uh, some things there. Um, something else on this page actually on on every page i believe uh at the bottom here you will have the name of the instrument and you have the human swing shift which we showed earlier those are global controls uh what we can do on every page is if you wanted to you can click on the sound and you can choose a different sound so let's say i don't want this to be uh cajon i want it to be the triangle and then um it'll play a quick loop um and if i want to click through you have some options for each instrument also so i can have the heavy triangle or the large triangle or the medium triangle or the small triangle uh and you have three in this case a b cd three or uh, four options for each um, except for the small you have three options or if i wanted vibra slap um i have uh as you see natural and bright four options there uh for that so finger snaps um do we have we have hand claps um which um i want to use uh on a song i might use that on my demo um i haven't created a demo yet so uh, you'll hear it if i have claps in there um so yeah uh i can have hand claps congas, so you can load up up to five if i wanted to add something here i can hit add it'll be the purple color and i can choose between all of these uh, 16 um different instruments or is it 15 16. um so yeah that is that uh, i'm gonna close the sort of browser there for the instruments and i can swap out so let's say i i, I like the um shaker groove i can just swap that out with congas there um Cool. Uh, I think that is the editor page. And then finally, we have the mixer page. With the mixer page, you can adjust the timing of each of the instruments. Um, you know, 
uh, negative uh, 80 or positive 80. I believe um, this is just for the instrument. So remember the shift that where we had those. Um, the shift here is global. This will affect every instrument where this will only affect that specific instrument. So keep that in mind. You can adjust the tuning. So let's say you want it down um, from 12 semitones up to uh up to 12, negative 12, so that's down an octave, up an octave, semitones. You can adjust the spread, which is the width. So if I play, I'm gonna play the red. Um, if I want it wider in the stereo field, uh, if I wanna double it, you can hear that adding extra width. We can adjust the mic for each of these instruments. So let's say I want this to be far away. You hear more of the room, or it can be up close where we had it before. It has a compressor that we can choose from, uh, levelers and punch and mono and smash and annihilation. We can adjust the compression level um, from 0% to 100%. Let's say I wanted to just annihilate it. You can hear that being more of a saturator there. We have an EQ for each instrument. So we have a tilt, uh, boost, sparkle, cleanup, high pass, low pass. And you can adjust that by percentage. You can have reverb. Um, if it's far back in the room, it already has some reverb. You can hear that, but we can even add more reverb which is actually kind of cool for sound design. Um, with the reverb that, I probably wouldn't have a loop with that reverb. I'd probably just hit a one hit, one shot. But again, all this is built into the plugin. Then of course we have delay. So you can choose between dotted eighth, eighth, triplets. You see the options there. Let's go here. So this is actually a great plugin just to open up and use to create grooves, uh, build your own loops and patterns within. So uh, something like I just played like this. Uh, so let's just mess around with the cowbell. Again, you have the same settings. I want to double that, add it, make it wider, bring it closer, add some more reverb. So there you have that, and then we have Shaker. So let's play them all. And then we have some overall uh, room uh, compression and uh, reverb. We can put everything in a large room, small room, medium, uh, compression here. And then we can link controls globally. So we can link the tuning uh, or the timing so that when we select one, it selects them all. Uh, or the timing. So all these layers are linked together if you choose a link control. So you can do the individual settings uh, to your liking. And then if you want to link them and adjust them globally all together, you can do that. And again, remember, human eye swing and shift are all ready um, global controls so i believe that is the overview um you do have a lock function so you can lock the options i believe just on the mixer let's see um so i can adjust things there uh, i want to say the lock locks the mixer settings um there uh but i could be wrong with what that is doing um so that you don't have to change anything but maybe i'm wrong there so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to mute the microphone and i'm going to play through a couple of the presets here that we have um Let's see, we have 117, so I'm going to play through a few of them, not all of them, uh, but here we go.
So that is a quick playthrough of just some of the presets that come with Session Percussionist. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna jump over to a demo that I created featuring Session Percussionist. Here we go. So that is a demo I created. If you see the yellow tracks here, that is the Session Percussionist. I really only have two things going with the Session Percussionist. You see them come in and out throughout the track. And we have this first uh, Keep Bouncing, which I believe was uh, not a preset. I think it's a preset that I tweaked. I adjusted some sounds and some of the pattern that was playing, but it's playing two different patterns. So I'm gonna play that here. It almost sounds like hearing it by itself. It almost sounds like horses galloping, um, but those are hand claps and some tambourines and some shakers. And then along with that, I have this one night preset playing. I'm going to bring that over here.
and I was just holding down the key um, for those uh, beats and then letting go so that it only played um, that cowbell slash cajon rhythm and shaker rhythm uh, by itself. Um, and it didn't loop the whole time. I just had that break uh, every, uh, what is that, half beat or so. So I'm going to play those two together. So my final thoughts on Session Percussionist, this is an incredible instrument. There's a lot of versatility here with having different sounds, creating your own patterns, using, I don't know if it's exactly AI, but using um, the browser to build custom patterns out of a pattern that you create or that you click in or that you record. Uh, you have your modulation wheel and pitch wheel that can adjust the impact in the rolls. You have different roll builders. You have the flam builder. You have humanized swing shift functions. You have all those different options, 15 velocity layer, 21 articulations, uh, six different speeds, round robins, everything we mentioned at the beginning of this, and all for under $100. And it is a really great plugin. I am going to be using this a lot, especially since I like having those percussion loops and layers on top of my tracks. Uh, the demo that I shared with you was actually for an artist, so hopefully um, the artist likes that. Uh, so I am using this in the context of actual music that I'm working on for sync or for artists or for trailers. So shout out to Native Instruments for providing session percussionists to us at the Samplist for no charge. Uh, and hopefully you will pick this up and be sure to look out for any Native Instrument deals as we enter the holiday season uh, here. So maybe there'll be some deals where you can pick up session percussionist maybe some extra bonuses along the way so definitely be on the lookout for that uh this has been marcus the fingers manderson be sure to like comment and subscribe to this channel to sample for more great videos like this and we will see you in the next video all right all right peace